Greetings, Intro to Engineering Design. Now that we've completed the first step of reverse engineering, which was visual analysis, we're going to take a look at functional analysis and structural analysis. Simply put, reverse engineering is taking something apart, analyzing how it works, and understanding its structure and function. But let's look a little deeper into that. Let's start by exploring why is reverse engineering used. We're going to look briefly into these four main categories, documentation, discovery, investigation, and product development. One of the reasons we might reverse engineer a product is to create documentation such as drawings. Nostalgia and recycling trends constantly bring back products from long ago. When something from days gone by comes back into style, we may need to have access to the original documentation. And we may need to reverse engineer the product so that we can create documentation to facilitate modern manufacturing processes. Interoperability is when products not manufactured by the same company are able to be used interchangeably, such as Lego and Megablocks. The need to reverse engineer may become apparent when the patent on a profitable product expires, allowing competitors to begin manufacturing a similar product that is compatible with the original. Then there's a the case of maintenance. Let's say you buy a house and there's a sprinkler irrigation system installed by the previous owner, but they didn't leave any documentation. When you discover a leak, it may become necessary to do some digging to better understand the layout of the system. Another reason that we might want to reverse engineer is for discovery. This is something that's done a lot um, in research in universities and colleges where there are big groups of people who are dedicated to understanding things better. And you could say that they were reverse engineering, such as the human brain or the human genome project. The third reason we reverse engineer, we're gonna call discovery. Some might call it espionage. It's the act of taking possession of enemy equipment or a competitor's product and identifying the components, function and operation to gain military or commercial advantage. During World War II, three American B-29s made emergency landings in the Soviet Union after bombing raids over Japan. One of the B-29s was used for flight testing and training. One of the B-29s was left intact for reference, and the third was reverse engineered. As a result, the Soviets built the 2-4, a nearly identical copy of the B-29. The Soviet engineers were under pressure to recreate an exact replica of the B-29. In fact, a small hole that was mistakenly drilled by a Boeing engineer was reproduced in every 2-4. But some changes in design were approved. The Soviets used the metric system, so 16th inch aluminum sheet metal was not available. It was replaced with thicker, me thicker metric gauge metal, making the 2-4s more than 3,000 pounds heavier than the B-29. The same process is used by commercial entities. In to, to discover the components, function, and operation of a competitor's product. The fourth reason we might reverse engineer is investigation or forensics. A product can be reverse engineered for analysis and testing. If a competitor releases a product that appears to include patent work, reverse engineering can be used to verify patent infringement. If a design fails, reverse engineering is often performed to investigate the as-built conditions and identify the mode of failure. The images shown are the aftermath of the Hyatt Regency walkway collapse, which occurred in Kansas City in 1981. The disaster killed 114 people and injured more than 200. Upon investigation, it was discovered that the contractor had installed the walkway using a hangar design other than the original engineering engineered design. Reverse engineering revealed that the alternate design did not meet the building codes and was shown to be structurally inadequate. This slide shows a whole bunch of reasons why an industry might want to use reverse engineering to improve or redesign a product. Each of these reasons shares the same common goal, that the industry wants to remain competitive and profitable, because let's face it, if an industry isn't profitable, it's probably not going to be that industry for much longer. Reverse engineering often requires a lot of precision, and so a lot of really fun, fancy equipment is used to reverse engineer. 
in the classroom, the most common piece of equipment that we're going to use is the digital or dial calipers. We can look at reverse engineering as being broken down into three stages. The first one is visual analysis, where we look carefully at things like the elements and principles of design and try to understand better why the object looks the way that it does. The second one is functional analysis, which we're looking at at the moment, which determines why the product does what it does and how it does it. And then the third one is structural analysis, where we look a little deeper into why the materials that were selected were selected, how strong they are, and um, things like that. So looking a little deeper into functional analysis, the middle step of reverse engineering, we're going to start off by looking at the purpose. Let's look for a moment at a toothbrush. The purpose of a toothbrush is to clean teeth and gums and prevent tooth and gum de decay. Next, we're going to examine the function. So an important part of this is an annotated sketch. Annotated means we're going to write a bunch of explanatory notes. So an annotated sketch with all visible components labeled is created. A hypothesis is devised to describe in detail the sequential operation or function of the device using the sketch as reference. So if you look here, there is an attempt to explain the different components of the electrical toothbrush and their functions. Sometimes when we reverse engineer something, especially when it, there's a lot of electronics involved or a motor or an engine, we may want to just focus on the inputs and the outputs. The black box systems model is used to identify what goes into and out of a product in order to make it work as a system. And we don't need to fit, worry about the internal workings. The black box is used to represent the product's internal components or processes, which are done, deemed unknown at this point. An example would be a computer where we have a general understanding of the inputs, such as the keyboard and the mouse and maybe the microphone or a thumb drive, and we understand how the outputs are used, that we can hear sound from the speakers, that we can look at the screen and see information being produced, that the computer is crunching numbers or researching, finding stuff for us on the internet. But for a lot of our purposes, we don't need to actually understand what goes on inside of the computer. And so we'll describe the computer as the black box. Going back to our example of the toothbrush, we can pretty easily identify the inputs and outputs. And we don't need to worry too much about how the electrons are actually moving around inside of the electronic and electrical components of the toothbrush itself. The final step of reverse engineering is product disassembly. Product disassembly is when we tear down a product and actually understand what is under the hood, I guess you could say. It uncovers the principles behind how a product works and it's the fun part of reverse engineering where we tear the product apart. Um, but we need to collect data. That's an important piece of this and so in order to do that we're going to use a product disassembly chart. As we work through the product disassembly, we need to keep in mind these important questions. We need to think about how the parts interact. Um, what are the good and bad features of the product? Um, following this final piece of the reverse engineering, we're actually going to look a little bit at how we could make the product better. Um, so then we look at what caused the product to succeed or fail. Are the materials appropriate? What manufacturing process was used? And what about the cost piece of it? Again, we need to be making a profit if we want to stay in business. Specific to the disassembly part of reverse engineering, here are some reasons why we would do this. To identify components and interactions of components, determine their strengths and weaknesses of the individual parts, and understand the operation um, and to develop documentation. This is a list of all of the steps that could be part of the procedure of reverse engineering. So just the important piece of this is that we meticulously um, learn as much as we can about the parts and the product as a whole and that we document it all.
great way to document it is to use something like this product disassembly chart where each part is carefully cataloged. We take care of paying attention to the quantity, the dimensions, the function, try to figure out what the material is, and then we can go deeper and figure out the properties of that material, the density, the mass or weight, the texture or finish, and how it interacts with other parts. Um, and so a chart like this is an excellent way to be very thorough in your documentation. So whatever the original reason is that a product is being reverse engineered, it's usually a judgment on what was working and what wasn't and how to make it better. And so answering important questions will help you determine how you can improve the product or what was wrong with it in the beginning. And this is a nice example of a way that you could display all of the information um, for a reverse engineered product.